Hello, and welcome to this lecture on coordinate systems. The learning objectives for this lecture are to understand the basic concepts of spherical coordinates or latitude and longitude, understand the basic concepts of planar coordinates, identify two specific planar coordinate systems, and discern the components of datums. Throughout history, maps have served a fundamental purpose for geographically referencing and indexing locations at the surface of the Earth. Geographical referencing at the surface of the Earth has many forms, from zip codes to street addresses to latitude and longitude coordinates. To develop a map projection, latitude and longitude coordinates are mathematically converted into planar, Cartesian, or XY coordinates that I will discuss in just a moment. Latitude and longitude coordinates, also referred to as spherical coordinates, use the measures of angles or degrees from both the center of the Earth for latitude and from the prime meridian or zero degrees for longitude. Lines of latitude, also known as parallels, are measured from north to south based on their position in relation to the equator. Lines of longitude, also known as meridians, are measured east to west from the prime meridian. In this figure, a hypothetical point is being referenced at 40 degrees north and 60 degrees west. Note how this point is derived based on angular measurements, latitude from the center of the Earth and latitude as degrees from an arbitrary starting point of the prime meridian. Decimal degree coordinates are a way of referring to latitude and longitude coordinates in a numerical decimal format as opposed to degrees, minutes, and seconds. By using a numerical decimal format, latitude and longitude coordinate pairs can, for example, be entered much easier into a global positioning system device or used in an online mapping tool like Google Maps. In this example, we see a decimal degree coordinate of 43.665, negative 74.339, obtained by clicking a spot on Google Maps. The following example shows how decimal degrees can be calculated from degrees, minutes, and seconds. First, some background. One degree is equal to 60 minutes, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Using 43 degrees, 4 minutes, 31 seconds as an example, how is this coordinate the same as 43.0753? The first step is to convert seconds to minutes, or divide 31 seconds by 60 to get 0 0.5166 minutes. The second step is to convert the minutes to degrees, where you first add the minutes from step one, which were 0 0.5166, with four, and divide that combined value of 4.5166 by 60 to get 0 0.0753 degrees. Finally, you combine the degree value from step two, or 0 0.0753, on to the original degree of 43 degrees to obtain 43.0753. Planar coordinates are based on the idea of the Cartesian space and referenced on an XY grid. In a Cartesian XY grid, the X axis are east to west coordinate values, and the Y axis is north to south coordinate values. In this example, a point is referenced at an x value of 3 and a y value of 2. Note that this xy coordinate is in the positive number space of the grid. Planar coordinate systems are based off the ideas of a Cartesian grid. You may be wondering why planar coordinate systems were developed 
since they are based on map projections that inherently contain errors. The reason planar coordinates have been developed is that they are more efficient and provide better meaning for measurement than spherical coordinates. For example, in an application such as surveying, it is more meaningful to express distances and areas in terms of feet or meters versus degrees, minutes, and seconds. In the following section, two common planar coordinate systems are discussed. The Universal Transverse Mercator, or UTM coordinate system, is an internationally standard planar coordinate system. In the UTM system, the Earth is divided up in 60 zones that span 6 degrees of longitude each, creating 60 zones total covering the entire Earth, and each UTM zone is divided into a north and south section. Note in this figure how the zones become distorted the closer they are to the north and south poles. This is due to the nature of the Mercator map projection that is the basis for this coordinate system. The equator, or zero degrees latitude, is used to mark the boundary between the north and south sections of each UTM zone. Each UTM zone uses its own transverse cylindrical projection. This means that the cylindrical projection plane is turned to be around the north and south pole and not the equator to minimize scale distortions. This image shows a full single UTM zone. Note how the north and south sections of the zone are divided by the equator. Also note how the Cartesian XY grid of the north zone originates on the bottom left of the zone on the equator at zero degrees latitude. And also note how the Cartesian XY grid of the south zone originates on the bottom left of the zone at 90 degrees south. From the respective zero, zero origin points of each zone, coordinates are then measured out in meters along the zone's projection in a positive number space and in units referred to as northings, or measurements from north to south, and eastings, or measurements from east to west. The central meridian of each UTM zone is referred to as a false easting. So all the coordinate values will be positive and assign the value of 500,000 meters east. Finally, make note of the two sample UTM coordinates that are shown approximately in the middle of the north and south. These sample coordinates demonstrate how a UTM coordinate pair is written. Using the north coordinate as an example, a UTM coordinate is indicated by the zone number, the north or south hemisphere with the letter N or S, the six digit easting value, and the seven digit northing value. Although the UTM coordinate system is very useful due to its ability to internationally reference any point on Earth via a planar coordinate system, it also has its drawbacks. The most notable drawback is that the 60 zones of the UTM system do not conform to political boundaries or jurisdictions and can thus be unusable in situations where a geographical referencing system is needed to cross an entire political or jurisdictional entity. Furthermore, given that each UTM zone is defined by its own unique projection, maps of adjoining zones will not conform to one another along a shared border. This figure shows UTM zones in the continental United States. Note how many of the zones divide various states into two or more sections. For example, make note of the dash box shown on the upper right of the figure that highlights an area between zones 17 and 18 that cross through New York State. In this case, a special map projection called UTM Zone 18 Extended has been developed so that UTM Zone 18 coordinates can be used for all of New York State. Another type of planar coordinate system we will talk about next is the State Plane or SPC system. Like UTM, the State Plane coordinate system is based on a series of specialized map projections that define specialized zones. In this case, 
However, all of the zones are within the United States and defined within political boundaries. Note in the figure that zones do not extend beyond state boundaries and a state may have several zones, as seen by these red arrows showing three zones within New York State. Thus, state plane coordinates are not suitable for regional or multiple state mapping. State plane zones generally measure coordinates in U.S. feet values. As you may recall from my other video lecture on map projections and projection surfaces, distortion is least along the standard lines. Thus, state plane zones use specialized projections optimized to fit the shape and orientation of the zone contained within that state. This image shows examples of state plane coordinate zones and the projection services used to define those zones. The left side of this figure shows state plane coordinates for New York State. These zones are based on a transverse cylindrical projection as they are north to south oriented zones. The choice of a particular projection surface is to minimize scale distortion caused by the projection. The final important concept you need to understand for coordinate systems are datums. A horizontal datum from which we would derive xy coordinates consists of two elements, a reference ellipsoid and accurately known control points. The Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's more of an ellipse or egg shape and therefore its shape must be approximated in order for coordinate systems to be referenced to the Earth's surface. Reference ellipsoids are mathematical approximations of the Earth's shape. And many have been developed over the past 200 years and are often given the names of the mathematician that developed the ellipsoid, such as the Clark 1866 reference ellipsoid. Technical discussion of reference ellipsoids are beyond the scope of this video, and you are encouraged to research the topic geodesy to learn more. However, it is important to understand the basic ideas of ellipsoids in a mapping context as a spot on the Earth's surface can have different coordinate values based on the reference ellipsoid used to measure the coordinates. Note how in this figure, the example point, which is a small circle located at the same spot on the surface of the Earth, has a different latitude value of 35, 41, and 45 based on the reference ellipsoid used to measure it. Control points are accurately measured locations used for reference points in land surveying and for developing datums. In the United States, government organizations like the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey physically mark control points with a small metal disk called a benchmark. Datums that you will often encounter in a geographic information systems or GIS context have been developed based on advances in accurate earth shape measure and to cover wide areas. Common datums you will find in GIS datasets include the North American Datum of 1983, or NAD83, and the World Geodetic System of 1984, or WGS84. WGS84 is the datum that is used for most global positioning system or GPS receiver coordinates. It is very important to know what the datum is when working with GIS data. Different datums based on different reference ellipsoids can cause the same location to have significantly different coordinate values depending on which coordinates the datum references. This image shows an example of the same GIS data set being referenced in different datums and the issues that this can cause. In this figure, the blue lines are a road network referenced in the North American datum of 1927 or NAD27 and the red lines are the same road network referenced in the North American datum of 1983 or NAD83. Note how the NAD83 data appears almost shifted from the NAD27 data. Locations can have an almost 100 foot or 30 meter difference in where their coordinates are referenced depending on the datum used. Checking what the datum is for a GIS data set is a good first step for troubleshooting data that does not overlay properly. Not knowing the datum is a common problem that beginning GIS users encounter when working with GIS data derived from different sources. To summarize the overall ideas of how the various components of a coordinate system work, it is useful to think of a coordinate system in the following way. 
A horizontal datum based on a reference ellipsoid and control points is used to mathematically define the Earth's shape and provide a reference for latitude and longitude or spherical coordinates. A map projection mathematically translates a three-dimensional representation of the Earth into a two-dimensional representation which unavoidably creates some distortion. Based on this translation created through a map projection, spherical coordinates can be converted into planar or XY coordinates. A coordinate system can then be derived from an agreed upon origin point based on map projections optimized for a particular region and using standard units of measurement. In this lecture, you learned about coordinate systems. You were shown how spherical coordinates use the measure of angles or degrees from both the center of the Earth for latitude and from the prime meridian or zero degrees for longitude. You were then shown how planar coordinate systems help to reference locations on the Earth's surface using Cartesian XY coordinates as opposed to spherical latitude and longitude coordinates. Next, you were shown two specific planar coordinate systems. The Universal Transverse Mercator, or UTM, which divides the Earth up into 60 zones that span 6 degrees of longitude each, and state plane coordinates, which are based on a series of specialized map projections that define specialized zones within U.S. states. Finally, you were shown the components of datums, which consist of a reference ellipsoid or a mathematical approximation of the Earth's shape and control points, which are accurately measured locations used as reference points. Remember that in a Geographic Information Systems or GIS context, it is important to know the datum being used as a specific location on the Earth's surface can appear as a different coordinate value depending on the datum used. The following are references used in preparing this lecture. If you enjoyed this short lecture or have any comments or questions, feel free to contact me at the email address below. Thanks for watching.